Hello and welcome everyone. So I'm going to do a video here that is really going to explain a little bit more about how, number one, to get rid of a really, really tough bacterial infection that is really resistant to a lot of drugs out there and actually has killed people and it's, it's really something that's on their skin because this is a bacterial infection. So I want people to understand the difference between a bacterial infection and a virus. There is a big, big difference and also a parasite. So people can actually really understand this. And I'm going to show you a lot of illustrations and a lot of information, so please watch this whole entire video so you really have the knowledge. Because there's so much misinformation out there. People are just... I mean, you got uneducated people teaching uneducated people. I mean, that's a, that's a rec recipe for disaster. When you have an educated person teaching people that want to learn, that's a recipe for success. So keep that in mind. And I know a lot of you are really intelligent that are watching my videos. Um, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of you um, for years, and more of you are coming, and you're the ones that keep me motivated for putting up videos. Hey, James, do a video about this, do a video about this, and I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, even though I don't make any money on this channel, I do it because I love it, and it's like taking what's in my brain, I wish I could hook it up to the internet, so that way all of you can just, you know, like a library and, and, and learn from it, but that's why I make the videos. So with that said, let's go ahead and go over. Uh, a lot of people uh, are familiar with uh, MRSA, and this is a tongue twister here, folks. It's called Staphylococcus uh, aureus, and uh, M MRSA, MRSA, you know, however you want to uh, pronounce that, it's resistant to commonly used antibiotics, okay? And this is a big, big problem. But, if you're using the oregano oil and it's undiluted, this is key, because I've had this, and I'll show you the pictures here in a moment. If something, if a solution is diluted, it refers to the process of adding additional um, solvent to a solution to decrease its concentration, right? So, I, so for example, I took a little bit of coconut oil, I put it on my skin, it was a small area, um, just kind of on my lower wrist, and... I then put the oregano drops, and it wasn't really doing very much. Then, and I'm going to explain here in a moment, then I started using it uh, without the dilution, and it worked. So the reason why is this. This process keeps the amount of solute constant, but increases the total amount of solution, thereby, uh, thereby decreasing its final concentration. So what that means is that if something's undiluted, the concentration of the product is very, very, very strong. So, if you need to use three drops and it's undiluted and you need to put it on your skin to get rid of uh, MRSA, uh, MRSA, and I'm going to show you this picture here right now. Let's go back to this screen. You see these pictures? I want everyone to see this. You see the how it's coming out of the skin. This is very, very strong bacteria. If you don't, this is not to gross in there out for educational purpose. Look at how it just ate right through the skin. Look at this. Looks like it starts like a pimple. And then it comes out very, very strong. A staph infection, you can get it anywhere. Um, I mean, look at this bump here. If you don't kill this, and I've done it with straight oregano, and if it gets on the outer skin, you gotta put a little bit of coconut oil. I use a Q-tip, and that's how I got rid of it. Now, this is not something to mess around with. If you want to use a, a product that's highly concentrated and you want to dilute the heck out of it, you're not going to get rid of this. I can tell you that right now. You will still have it. Unless you're, you're probably soaking in it. Um, but even then, I mean, <laughs> this is just something that you don't want to mess around with. Luckily, mine was small, and this was years ago when I knew how to get rid of it, because this is just brutal, folks. Uh, this is not something that is for the faint at heart, but unfortunately it is uh, out there, and it can happen. Alright, so with that said, let's go ahead and go to, actually I was going to show you a little bit about, um, there's things about, uh, when you have skin infections, of course you want to wash, wash the area, um, you want to clean it, um, you know, things like that, but, you know, I, I definitely still recommend um, not really touching it to 
possibly spread it anywhere else where there's an open wound because that's how it can spread. So you want to be really careful and um, definitely um, really be a lot more aware on that. Now, when it comes to a virus, okay, that was a bacterial infection. So now I'm going to explain a virus. And I've done videos on this. I'm going to go over it a little more. So a virus is an effective agent that typically consists of a nucleic acid acid molecule and a protein coat okay so it's too small to be seen and you know it can definitely multiply um, within the living cells of a host so basically it's a protein right and the medical community doesn't have any drugs or any solution for any type of virus why because of the the where it where it gets dumped in to your uh, body it gets dumped into your lymphatic system which most people have a very lymphatic system and I'll get into that more here in a moment but a lot of people have parasites these folks are geniuses and you gotta understand how what a parasite is parasites are brutal and they're silent folks they're smart they know how to live they've been here a lot longer than us and if you have the expertise that I'm teaching you you won't have the problem with the parasites that most people are getting if you're eating a lot of uh, sushi, raw fish full of parasites. I don't care what anyone says. Those, those hatch into your system when they get in, and it's a big, big problem. So uh, a parasite's an organism that lives in or another organism its host and benefits by deriving nutrients at the host's expense. That's why a lot of people, they're hungry all the time, and they're like, James, I'm just starving. Well, you could have a parasite too, not to scare you. Um, you know, if you're getting these symptoms all the time, until you fully detox and cleanse your lymph system, a parasite's alive, though. So let's take a look. What does a parasite look like? Okay? Mosquitoes can, can uh, obviously spread parasites. But what does a parasite look like? Well, here's a parasite right here, folks. That is a parasite. It looks like a little worm. A lot of bodybuilders get them from their high meat diet. Um, here's another parasite here. So these are alive, folks. So a virus is not alive. Here's a gut parasite that a lot of people have. Giardi is one of them. Uh, and here's another parasite here. As you can see, I'm trying to really show everyone this so they can understand the difference here. So the reason I'm showing everyone this is there's a parasite right, right there coming out of the arm. So these are pretty obvious ones. But there's many different kinds of parasites. Hookworms, roundworms, um, fluke which can be in your liver. Um, so you, you can get parasites from many, 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 many different things. So let's go back to the virus here. All right, so in some of my older videos, which a lot of people nowadays are actually using my information for their own gain, which is fine. And I, this is not about other people because I don't frankly care about them because I've healed myself, other people are healing, I get the test results back, so it's not all hearsay. All right, so here is a herpes virus, and as you can see, it's got the protein coat, and it's, you know, these are influenza viruses, these are different types of viruses, okay? So I just want to show people this particular picture, and before we go into the next uh, screen here. So let's take a look at this. This is a video I did back August 31st, 2017. And I was talking about a particular type of fever, and I'm just, you know, really, really explain. I'll kind of play this clip, and I'll explain a little bit more. Now, this can be very serious. There's the lovely mosquito that anybody can be bitten from. It's not to scare you, but again, you need to um, really understand that that is a lot of symptoms that you're going to get, and. Um, these symptoms are high fever, rash, um, muscle and joint pain. In severe cases, you're going to get serious bleeding, shock, be life threatening. Okay, so with that said, here is the beautiful, sorry about that, <laughs> here is the beautiful lymphatic system. Okay, so I wanted to pick this photo just to kind of show some color here of the overall lymph system. Okay. So now you can kind of see that's the lymphatic system. So now let's go to the actual parasite again. 
so when, when, back to what I was talking about with herpes. So signals from the immune system that can repel a common parasite inadvertently can cause a dormant infection to become active again, a new study shows. The same signal uh, signals, let me just kind of really highlight this so people can see, the same signals cause an inactive herpes virus infection in mice to begin replicating again. Okay, so as you can see here, it kind of looks like a parasite, but it's still a virus, right? So if herpes was an actual parasite, like what I just mentioned, and as, you know, kind of showing here, then it would be a little easier to, to actually kill it, meaning you could kill it. But you can't really kill a virus. You have to actually detox your entire lymph system in order for that to happen. That's the only way, right? And this is why I'm getting these negative test results, and this is why people are healing. So this is, yeah, this is the real deal, folks. And there's a few other people, but very few people really understand how all of this works. You can't kill a virus. You can't. You can kill a parasite. It's a living, breathing organism. You can't kill a virus. It's not alive. It's not this living, breathing thing. It's a protein. You can't kill it. It's impossible. So, again, science is important so you understand. You can kill a bacterial infection, which I mentioned with uh, MRSA. Uh, so, this is where it comes down to. And then everyone understands this. Everyone cut, tries to use the word cure. And this basically happened, uh, you leave that video here, in the late 20s when the Rockefellers and the Carnegies took over the schools, and they started changing everything to this whole system. Therapy, surgery, and treatments, and they skewed the whole thing in pharmaceutical drugs. And they ran in ads in the 40s when they uh, started the, um, the uh, whole AMA, American Medical Association, or in my terms, American Malpractice Association, but anyways, um, yeah, just a little humor there, but you know, the, the whole point here is that's what's been happening since the 40s, okay? And this particular system, they ran ads touting against natural ways, um, and that's, that was an open book, kind of shut book at that point, and um, shut case that took over, and that's where it's been ever since. So, any questions, folks, go ahead and let me know. But now you can understand here that you can use the oregano oil to help with your lymphatic system. Um, you can use the raw fruit and you can use clean water and intermittent fasting, that's how you're going to heal your body. Without the combination of those, it's not going to happen. So, if you want to truly heal, thank you so much.